the ancient Olympic Games, the Roman Empire, the Byzantium, the years of the Frankish and the Turkish empires are still alive in an extraordinary place that invites us to explore it. Our journey begins with Homer as our guide, since in Iliad he mentions the conversation between Nestor, king of Pylos, and Achilles during the game that Achilles organized in Buprasium in order to honor the memory of his friend Hector. Oh, had I now the force I felt of yore, known through Buprasium and the Pelian shore, victorious then in every solemn game, ordained to Amarins' mighty name. And those were not the only games, since athletes from Buprasium always participated in the ancient Olympic Games. Vuprasia lies on the west coast of Peloponnesus, near ancient Olympia, which was the most prominent religious and athletic center of its time. Pausanias, Herodotus, and Macriyanis state that Irmini, today known as Cunupelli, a city of ancient Ilia, was founded by the Pelasgians and resided by the descendants of the mythical king of Ilida, Avgias. The Frankish wall we see today on those hills connects this sacred place with the medieval times, whereas the fountains of Irmini demonstrate the area's healing power. The sea appears everywhere in this scenery and is a big part of the residents' everyday life. Here is the most beautiful landscape of Greece. It has mountains, it has trees, and it has a sea. Here we have the best quality of fish in Greece. There are many fishermen who work every day, and as natives eat fresh catch every day. As we continue our journey, we reach the forest of Strophilia, which along with a group of lakes and other forests, creates a beautiful, unique setting. Strophilia is a remarkable destination for its visitors. Some say it took its name from its pine trees, whose highest branches reach up to the sky. According to the tradition, the forest took its name from the grapes that are cultivated in the region. Some others say that the name Strophilia comes from the constant twirling of the leaves, a sound that accompanies the visitor during his walk inside this magnificent woodland. The name Vuprasia comes from its residents' main occupation, which was the upbringing and the trade of cattle. Today, Vuprasia still produces fruits and vegetables of the highest quality. More specifically in Manolada, there are numerous strawberry plants, which not only make the area one of the country's most prominent strawberry providers, but they also enhance the beauty of the landscape from the Dam of Pinios to the Ionian Sea. 
Just a short distance away, the traveler can visit Xenies, a village that took its name from Xenius Zeus, reminding the virtue of hospitality in this region where the gods were praised and worshipped. For some residents, Xenies may be the lost Atlantis of their own myth. The village Xenies, which is now underneath the water, was under the protection of Xenios Zeus and is still under the protection of the same god. This is a second small lost Atlantis. When the water leaves, we, as old residents, go to our old village and remember where we used to sleep and where we used to play. The Valley of Ilia extends to the Dam of Pinios that creates a beautiful lake. The lake has been used for many decades in order to irrigate the whole district's crops. When the dam was constructed in 1962, it helped everyone who lives and works in the valley. With the dam, everyone in the municipality is provided with water in their farms and their houses. Now they can water their crops, whether it's corn or watermelons or any other kind. In Manolada, history continues to unfold in one of the most famous monuments of the area, the Church of Paleopanagia. This temple is an example of Byzantine architecture and it reminds us of our history and our religious traditions up until this day. The forest of Strophilia, the lagoon of Kotichi and the lakes Lamnia and Kalogria are ecosystems that are protected by the Ramsar Convention and the Natura Network. The Lagoon of Kotichi is rich in fish such as sea bass, mullets, breams and eels. It is also the home of many migratory birds like herons, swallows, hawks and turtle doves. All those birds migrate to Kotichi in search of a hospitable environment and they become part of this magical wetland. And our journey continues to Lechena, where we can visit the historical raisin storehouses located next to the old train rails. The raisin storehouses remind us of significant events and travel us to the glorious days of their past many decades ago. The town of Lechena is distinguished for its active and timeless presence in the Greek history and commerce. Today, we follow the steps of the great writer Andreas Karkavitsas to his birthplace. On the town's central square, we can see his statue and visit his house, which is still filled with his personal belongings. Andres Karkavitsas was a member of the Greek educational group and his work reflects the customs, ethics and traditions of the Greek society as he experienced it. Next to the author's house, there is the town's folk art and history museum where the visitors can observe for themselves the tradition and the culture that have been preserved for centuries. Lechena is the proud birthplace of the famous writer Andreas Karkavitsas. This, of course, is a great legacy for the town and we feel obligated to spread his work so that the younger generations become familiar with it. 
We also try to create activities that will enhance our town's cultural events. The railway station and the raisin storehouses show the prosperity of a place that owes its power to the raisins, the wine and the vineyards. The village of Stafidokabos, named from the Greek word for raisin, indicates the importance of the grape to the whole region. The outdoor cinema that operates at the village today embodies a new cultural reference, which reinforces the town's history and its tradition. Giorgos Alevizopoulos recounts how his first vision began 23 years ago, when his love for films led him to travel around the neighboring villages on his tractor and to screen films through his own movie projector. Eventually, more and more people got involved in his efforts. We went to Athens and we bought an old projector and then we took Roman Polanski's Pirates and we decided to screen the film. On the first day of the screening, we borrowed some chairs from a coffee shop. We took approximately 100 chairs, but 300 people showed up, so most of them watched Polanski's Pirates standing up. Since the picture was filmed in Cinemascope and our projector's lenses was flat, the actors' heads were distorted and looked like eggs. There are many others who support this effort and they mostly are young people who live here. There are some older people and some younger people. Some of them left and some others will join us, but altogether it's a group effort. I may be the president today and I may be participating ever since its beginning, but there are dozens of people who have worked hard for this cinema. Our next stop is Andravida. The city lies in an area that is well known to the whole world, thanks to the popular breed of horses found in the region. Each year, the equestrian exhibition takes place in Andravida. The exhibition was first organized by the Philippus Union on June 1928. Its purpose was to boost the breeding of horses that were suitable for the Greek rural economy. Today, the exhibition is regarded as one of the most important equestrian customs of the county, and it takes place in the modern facilities of the Andravida Equestrian Center. In Andravida, which was once the capital of the Principality of Achaia, we can also visit the Temple of Hagia Sophia, this Frankish-built church is made of carved stones. The only part that is preserved until today is the temple's sanctuary. Elements of both the Byzantine and the Ottoman empires can be traced in this temple, which is an example of Western architecture and resembles to many other churches of the Dominican order in the West. We are at the temple of Hagia Sophia of Andravida, which was built on the 13th century by the Frankish rulers of the Principality of Morias. The temple was originally 45 meters long and 18 meters wide. What we see today is the sanctuary that consists of three parts of which the middle one is the largest. It was the place where the great court of the Principality would assemble and deliberate about various regulatory matters. Such was the splendor of this temple that in the Chronicle of Morias, Andravida is recorded as the most glorious city of Peloponnesus. Right next to the temple of Hagia Sophia, we can see the elementary school of Andravida. The school is in perfect harmony with its surroundings and it connects the historical memories with the tradition. Our journey follows the shores of the Boro. From the beach of Kunupelli until Lechena and Mircini, 
The white sand and the emerald waters do not let us forget that in this land, the sea is associated with the boundless valleys, the olive trees and the vineyards. In certain places, the beaches hide behind small hills and old villages. The fountain at the temple of Agi Apostoli quenches the thirst of the traveler. If one wishes to seek a small adventure, they can follow the pathways that link the hills of Itineca with the castle and with the monastery of La Herna. The ancient monastery of La Herna lies in the middle of a green valley, hidden behind centenarian olive trees. The Byzantine church, dedicated to Virgin Mary, is an example of Gothic architecture, but was later altered by the Franks. Inside the monastery, there are tombs with Latin inscriptions and coats of arms that belong to Frankish nobles. The church is a reminder of the celebrations that have been taking place inside the monastery's premises for many centuries. The religious tradition of the land continues in Kato Panaya, a beautiful village that was built in order to accommodate the refugees who came to Greece after the Asia Minor catastrophe in 1922. The village was named after the original Kato Panaya, which was located on the western end of Asia Minor. The village's church links the tradition to the history and the customs of the land. Our voyage continues as we reach a unique historical monument. The Frankish castle of our land is built at the Cape Helonata, in a rather strategic area. It was originally called Clermont, which later became Chlemuzzi in the Greek language. It is also referred to as Tornese, since the well-known Frankish Tornese coins were minted here. The historical development of the castle and the combination of myth and reality are reflected throughout the castle grounds. Chlemuzzi was built by Geoffrey II Villarduin. For its construction, he used the income of monasteries in Morias that belonged to Latin clerics. Located in the most elevated area of the town, Chlemuzzi was protecting the busy port of Kilini as well as Andravida, that was the capital of the Principality of Achaia. By protecting those prominent towns, the castle ensured the control of the whole district, which flourished during the rule of the Villarduins. Constantinos Palaiologos used Chlemuzzi as a military and regulatory center. After the fall of the Franks, it gradually started to lose its significance of guarding. In 1826, a big part of it was damaged after being bombarded by Ibrahim Pasha. Today, the castle maintains its Frankish architectural characteristics and is one of the most important and most well-preserved castles in Greece. The sightseers may visit its museum and witness images that revive the medieval times.
Leaving the castle behind us, we reach the endless beaches that lie underneath it, and we arrive at the thermal fountains. During the ancient years, sanctuaries honoring Asclepius, Aphrodite, and other gods were situated here. The ruins of the Roman baths confirm that during the ancient Greek and Roman times there used to be therapeutic spas in this area. Opposite to the islands of Xanthe and Kefalonia, the thermal spas connect to the sea through the luscious foliage of centenarian trees, mostly eucalypti, that were planted in 1890. That was also the year when Prime Minister Harilos Trikoupis expanded the railway that connected Piraeus and Athens with Peloponnesos, and the thermal fountains were once again utilized. The endless beaches and the sea that lie underneath the fountains seem to become one with the blue sky. The shores stretch out for miles and they constitute the ultimate holiday destination. Sandy beaches, hotel resorts, tranquility and a limitless sky that touches the Ionian Sea are only a few of the features that the visitor can admire in this location. All the paths lead to our final destination, the port of Kilini. Also known as Glareja, this city of ancient Ilida was built by settlers from Arcadia, who came from Mount Kilini, located in the mountain region of Arcadia. According to the myth, this was the birthplace of god Hermes, and the residents worshipped him, as well as god Pan and the nymph Kilini, who was Hermes's foster mother. On top of the ruins of the ancient city of Kilini, the Franks built the coastal city that was named Clermont, Clareja or Glareja. The development of Glareja and its multicultural character was the reason why major banks of the West built branches in this area. This commercial port has been linking the mainland cities to the Ionian Islands for many centuries now. <laughs> From the lighthouse of Kafkalida, the passing by ships, the fishermen's boats, the visitors and the admirers of Glareja wave back to the port of Kilini. The lighthouse is made of large stones, and underneath the beating waves, it hides the ruins of just another temple that reminds us of our past. The lighthouse leads our journey as the sea seems to wave farewell to our much-loved Kilini, a place whose shores hold all the memories, delights and pleasures of our land. The commercial and touristic development of the port has been evident and noticeable during the recent years. The port of Kilini connects Peloponnesus with the continental Greece and with the islands of the Ionian Sea. The travelers come to experience and enjoy a truly unique land. <laughs> 